Good Tuesday morning to you. Well, I'm back on this tape deck again. It's a real puzzler here. There is no clutch inside here. I've seen tape recorders where these spindles come apart. This does not come apart. There is no clutch that offers a drag on this. When I put my hand on this part and the back part, they do not, they're locked together. They're all one piece. So the only friction that you'll see, and I, I, sorry about the close-ups, I can't do close-ups with the ZE-1, uh, but if you look right here, this is the brake, okay? The brake does have a, um, a pad on it, and when you put it into stop, there was a lot of tension there, and I took and held this out like this and bent this up just a tiny bit so it would get closer. So hopefully it's not too tight, which could cause the tape to snap when you put it into stop. When you put it into play, It does not offer any drag here. I can spin it, see that? That is the problem, I think. Even though when the tape is coming down here, it appears to be okay, and it offers enough resistance to hold up this wire here. This is the shutoff switch that the tape goes up against, and when the tape comes to the end, this drops down, this shuts the mic, uh, the micro switch off, which turns the motor off, okay? But this is, this is freewheeling. There is no clutch in here. So all your friction, when it's in play, I assume is on the brake. And I can take a piece of paper and stick it in there and still turn it. In other words, it's not touching in the play. I would think that that needs to be touching just a little bit, but if I bend that anymore, it's gonna make it very tight, because this here, now you can't spin that, it's hard, because we're in the stop position right now, over here, Lever straight up and down is stop. When it's in the stop, your brakes are on, on both. You've got a brake here. You may or may not be able to see that. You've got a brake right there. See it right there? Okay. And you've got a brake right here. See that? And the springs are very tight. They work in unison. See that? They have a pad on it. I examined them. They have a good pad on them. And they are dragging on this black part here. Okay? Now I've seen tape recorders where they've used you, you remove them from the front, you can separate them, and they had like a white kind of a, like a felt pad or something inside that acted as a clutch. Well, this particular one does not. This uses the brake to provide a little drag on here. So bending this just a hair, very, very little, still did not accomplish anything. But what it did is it made the brake tighter here. So I may snap the tape when I come to a stop. I'm not sure. But when it's in play, and don't worry about this, this is the uh, this is the counter belt and it's loose as a goose. I'm not worried about that. Now, the counter belt goes back here. I even thought of taking this counter belt and putting a wire tie around it, like that so that it'll offer some drag on this when it's in the play position. 
In other words, use this, which I don't bother with the counter anyways. If I was use, years ago, I used to use, uh, use these all the time um, to find places on the tape. But of course, I'm only playing tapes now, and it's not going to be something I'm going to be doing on a daily basis like I did back in the 60s. So, I could utilize this you know, even take this thing and jam it over to the side like that, and that'll offer some more resistance on this, because you can, you can just about spin this freewheeling, and it's not supposed to do that. But I can't mess around, putting, adding more to this pad is going to make the stop so tight that it probably will almost certainly break the tape. So that's where we're at right now on this, and I just wanted to give an update on it. I have not tried this out since I tightened up the brake, but I don't think I accomplished anything. Now, when you rewind this, the brake is off, but you're engaged with the pulleys, as you can see here. And even though this belt is loose, this thing is working just fine. The little clip is still in there on that pulley. So that is working good. Everything is working good. The only problem I have is the tape coming off the cap stand. Now, there's a possibility that that particular tape, which is the first time I ran it in many years and the last time I used that tape as I had my solenoid controlled uh, Akai 385D, I believe it was, something like that. I no longer have it, a 50 pound tape deck. Um, when I transferred all those recordings to cassette back in the 80s, I believe it was, or late 80s. Uh, I think it might, it might be the tape. And uh, yes, this is not supposed to be spinning freely. I'm going to make another test on this. I'll put the camera down now. I'm going to grab a hold of this and this. All right. There is, if I force it and I hold this, I'm in play now, so the brake is off, okay? If I grab this black pulley, damn, my mind goes blank. I grab this pulley, okay, I get my hand on the bottom here so you can see it. I'm going to hold this black one still. Very hard, a lot of effort, but I can move that. So... In other words, if this was locked down and you tried to play the tape, it wouldn't work. So it's like that's the way it's made. There's no clutch there. There's no separation, no way to separate this. All you have on the back, I'm moving my finger because I can't tell where it is and they got wires in the way to back of the spindles held in with a C-clip and the whole thing just goes in here like that. There is a screw in there. I don't think you can see that with this camera. Now, I tried moving it. I cannot move it at all. It would not budge. So I don't want to break it off and strip it out and break the damn thing and it won't work at all. So I don't think that's a uh, issue. I don't think this has a clutch. On the take up, if I hold this and I did this off camera and I turn this, it's the same thing. It's very hard, but they do turn separately. Again, I don't think that's a clutch. I just think that's just the way it's made because I've worked on quite a few reel-to-reel -reel machines in the years past, and the clutches uh, move f uh, relatively free. I don't have any problem with the take-up. The take-up tension's perfect. The only problem I have is when I'm playing this back, it freewheels. So my feeling is the brake needs to be engaged more 
but that's impossible because if I tighten the brake up any more than it is now, you will not be able to move it without a lot of effort. Right now, I can feel the drag on it quite strong. That's in the stop position. In the rewind position, you're engaged with the pulleys, of course, so you're going to have drag there, but that's moving the pulleys. When it's in the play position, it's freewheeling. It shouldn't be. Now, I can tighten this up. I've already did it a little already, but it's not doing anything. I can put a piece of paper in there and get, get it to move in and out. So, I think this is as good as it gets. But this motor is running on this last video, 122 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know. I don't think that's normal. Now, it ran hot when I put 1.5 microfarad separate caps on clip leads on a video I did recently. But I... It didn't run that hot because I didn't run it as long. I've been running this thing now for uh, at least uh, an hour and a half, two hours, on and off when I was making that those last that last video that you just saw that I just put up there with the 1964 restaurant audio. The recorder was on for about two hours. Um, but, of course, I edited a lot of it out. A lot of it was an on video. So, anyways, uh, I think I think that's as good as it gets. What I'm going to do off camera is I'll put a tape in here. And maybe if I keep this down on the flat, it might help and it won't run off the capstan. Maybe. I don't know. But, like I say, it could be that tape. Because I have not used that tape, that particular one with the hygienic on it, on this recorder. That was the first time. So it might have been the tape. It wasn't that splice where it broke and I patched it because um, that was earlier in the tape. And quite a bit of tape has gone past the head since then. So in case any of you thought that maybe it was the splice job that I did, which if you, show, if you saw it, you would laugh at it. I know all I could do is just shake my head. I just, just can't do this stuff anymore. Okay, off camera, I'm gonna run this. That's the end of that, I think, on this. It's as good as it gets, but I'm gonna leave it apart for now. And if it does snap the tape when I come to a stop, I'm going to have to back this brake off. It don't matter because this thing free wheels anyways. And the only way I'm going to eliminate that is to use this belt, as I said. I can take this belt and put a screw here. Bring this belt over like that. And that alone will add friction to this. In other words, it won't freewheel. It's an experiment. I can try that. I'm just taking take a clip. Of course, this is an exaggeration. This belt is stretched out anyways. And naturally, I wouldn't... This is just to not give you an idea of what I want to do. This will add some drag so that when this is in the play, which is what it is right now, to keep the tape tighter here so it won't go sliding off of this. And I want to make one thing mention. I want to mention, I'm not even speaking good English here. <laughs> this um, wheel 
is perfectly flat. In other words, there's no, it's not domed up. Because I know some of you are probably saying, well, maybe the cap stand is domed, and that would cause it to tape to slide off. It only slid off on that one wheel that I was using, the hygienic restaurant wheel. All right. So anyways, <laughs> these are some of the ideas that I, I come up with. <laughs> All right. I got to do something here. So I'm going to experiment with it again uh, off camera. And um, and that's it. So thank you for watching. Sorry to have flapped on so much, but we're trying to solve a problem here that may not be able to be solved.